welcome everybody. Welcome to Celebrate Recovery. My name is Arlene Jackson, and I am your recovery leader. I'm also one of your pastors here at Grace Church, but I am more importantly a Christian who is in constant recovery from drug addiction, alcoholism, and codependency. I love when you say hi, Arlene, to me. I love it. Woo! I love it. You know why? Because I love love, and I know that I'm where I belong and that you all know me. You know me. You know why I'm here. You know who I am. So thank you. I love you too. My sobriety date is November 27th, 1985. And my codependency date came about 10 years later for recovery. And I quit smoking in the year 2000. So as you can see, recovery is a journey. It's a journey. Never stop walking the road, friends. And I'm glad, you know, that Linda and the band sang that uh, last song that they sang, Chain Breaker, uh, Chain Breaker, because that's what we're going to be talking about uh, this evening. Tonight, we are going to all look at, to break the chains of the ways of, of, of our thinking and our feelings and our acting that cause our addictions and afflictions. And the title of tonight's lesson is Victory. Victory. If there is anyone needing some victory tonight, when I say one, two, three, shout victory with me. One, two, three. Victory. victory. So take out your message notes. Your message notes are inside this little thing. There's a bunch of fill in the blanks. Um, and uh, follow along. There's some pens hanging around. See, it is truly my prayer tonight. It is my prayer, my deepest prayer, that this lesson that you hear tonight, that it's not just words. There's not just words that you will take what you hear tonight and apply it. See, we are on the sixth and the seventh steps in our annual rotation here um, of going through the 12 steps of recovery. And steps six and seven are pivotal steps. See, they are right in the middle. They're right in the middle of the 12 steps. As though God is telling us um, that here, Midway in our recovery program, we can either continue to go forward the rest of the way or we can turn back. See, the sixth or seventh steps are about our willingness to change and the actual change in us occurring. It's when we actually agree to change and then start to change. If you're, now, if you're new in the program of recovery tonight, if you're just here for the first time or the first couple of times, um, step six and seven may still seem a bit, uh, a bit far for you, but, but don't fear. One step at a time, and you'll get there. See, listen, listen, listen up and find out uh, what you'll find when you get there uh, tonight. You know, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous is very clear when, when it says, if we are painstaking about this phase of our development, we will be amazed before we are halfway through, right? And know that you're not alone uh, on your journey. We're all with you. Look around, every single one of us traveling along this road to recovery. So keep going. Don't opt out before the miracle happens. And meanwhile, go to your recovery groups. Keep going. Get a sponsor. Very important. Get a sponsor. Start the journey today, okay? Got it? Good. And eventually, you'll get to the sixth and seventh steps, uh, which is where we are. And like I said... These steps are about change. Now, step one, step one is about knowing um, that, that um, our addictions and our afflictions, they have us beat, and, and we surrender. And then steps two and three are about breaking our self-sufficiency and accepting God as the leader of our lives. Then steps four and five are about getting honest with what's wrong with us, getting humble about it, not making excuses like, you know, we always do, right? But instead actually becoming part of the recovery program, full of people doing the same thing by sharing our stuff honestly with a God and another person, uh, our sponsor, um, and ourselves. And, and by this time, we stop being outsiders. See, we finally understand we're all alike. We're not unique. And these are all necessary and foundational steps. One, two, three, four, five. Leading on up to steps six and seven, where we actually agree that change is going to happen, and we're not putting it off anymore. You see, because up to this point, 
I mean, we, we've agreed that there are some things that need to change, right? We've worked these steps. Do, do you have things that need to change in you? I do. Got any attitudes in yourself that are, that are messing you up? Anyone have any emotions that are getting the best of you? Um, are there addictions that are killing you and hurting other people? How about thoughts that pull you down? Now, here's one that, that's me. Are you still self-centered, thinking all about yourself all the time? It's all about me. Are, are, are you having problems letting go of self and letting God have you, right? Sure. Obviously, right? See, none of us came here because there was just nothing good on TV on Friday night, right? <laughs> we, we, beca- we came because we needed a different way to be. We can't live the old way anymore. And up to steps six and seven, we've gotten to look at all of our junk. We've spread it out. We've examined it from every which way, and we have said, yep, that's some serious junk we got there. And then we've clung to Jesus to help us look at our junk and understand what our junk was and why it was there. And we've made lists and we've said prayers about our junk. We've agreed with Jesus, something has to change about this junk. But that's different than something actually changing. So now the changes are coming if we decide to take steps six and seven. So I want us to read steps six and seven together with some Bible verses They're on the screen. Let's go. Step six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up, James 4.10. Step seven, we humbly asked him to remove all our shortcomings. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness, 1 John 1, 9. You see, change is no longer theoretical when we get to this place in the program. We will expect to become different, and then we will become different. I want to explain it this way. Let's say... Let's say you want to learn how to skateboard. All right? You see all these cool people skateboarding all over the place, right? And you think, how hard can this be? How hard can it be? I will learn how to do it through you. I can do all things, right? (laughs) So you get a skateboard. And you get yourself a good book about skateboarding. You learn everything about your skateboard. There's all this stuff to learn. There's these little feet on here. There's all this. It's, you learn everything about your skateboard. You memorize the book. But you know that skateboarding is also about balance, right? You're smart. So you get some books and talk to some people about balance. You learn all the scientific and mathematical formulas about balance, right? Know all about angles and balance, right? Right? So you'll be prepared to skateboard. The question is, The question is, does that make you know how to skateboard? No. No, it does not. Because the only way to skateboard (laughs) is to go to the top of the skateboard track, right? You step on the skateboard, and you push off, and you try to hang on as you careen helplessly screaming and flailing all the way down, right? 
And why is that? Because the only way you can learn how to skateboard is to what? Is to skateboard, right? So, the same is true with the change that God wants to make inside of us. Whether it is to give up drugs, or gambling, or alcohol, or sexual acting out, or overeating, or gambling, or dishonesty, codependency, uh, whatever we know ch needs changing uh, in us, our, our addictions and afflictions and all the harmful ways we have of thinking and feeling and acting out that goes along with all that stuff. The only way we're going to change is to change. And since we came to change, I mean, it makes sense that we would want to change, right? And yet many times, strange as it seems, that's not so. <laughs> it's just simply not so. Because we can get to this point and say a little prayer or two about God removing those things that uh, seem to bug us the most or seem to be most problematic uh, for us, but, but we have no intention of actually completely changing everything inside and out. Let's get real. And guess what? God wants to change you completely and make you a new person completely inside and out. And he knows whether or not you want to change, and he'll act accordingly. So the question is not, are you ready to change? But the question is, are you willing to change? Change, become a new person. Have the old pass away. Step out of the darkness and into the light. Are you willing to have people not recognize you as you walk by? Are you willing to react in totally different ways to the same situations? Are you ready to leave the past in the past, box it up like an old photograph because that was then and this is now? That kind of change, not just choosing what to keep and what to give away. I'm talking complete change and new creation. Are you ready to change? Because if you are, then welcome to step six and seven. See, because see, they're not easy steps. They're not. They may just seem like this short little blip in the middle, but they're not easy. Because when we speak the words to God to ask him to remove our character defects, we can completely expect that he is going to do just that. But we can't expect to dictate um, how he's going to do it or that it's going to be easy on us. Not at all. We're far from off the hook just because we leave the, um, the removal of our character flaws to God. Oh, no. To the contrary, it may make us very miserable for a time. And it may tax us to the utmost as we're tempted and tried and as strongholds in our life are broken. You know what strongholds are? Strongholds are those ways that Satan and selfishness in the world have surrounded your mind and your heart and your spirit and your body to train you to act in certain ways. They are strong, strong holds. And when those are broken, it's like your mind is broken, your heart is broken, your spirit is broken. It's like your very body is broken. And that's how it can feel when you ask God to remove your defects of character, and he actually does it. Because when you ask, he'll do it but then you're gonna to have to cooperate, and that, that hurts a lot sometimes. It, it's like finally getting on the skateboard, right? And hanging on, hoping you don't get thrown off as you go down that skateboard track. Welcome to change. No wonder so many people opt to not let God enter in and do his changing. Look around, you'll see it all over the place. People wanna change only until they find out that they have to change in order to change. because it can be painful, but it's worth it because then you'll be different, a new creation. So if you're ready to change, if you're ready to get up on the skateboard, uh, let's turn to your message notes and really quickly, because Jesus wants to give you victory. He wants, he wants you to change a lot more than even you want to change because he loves you best. So let's go to our message notes, get your pen, and let's quickly fill in some blanks around the word victory, okay? First comes the V in victory. Get ready to write it down. Voluntarily submit to God's changes in your life. Voluntarily submit to God's changes in my life. 
This is where you ask God of your own free will to change you however he feels it's best. This isn't something that your sponsor uh, forces you to do. It's not something your spouse forces you to do or, or that you do because it's what you're supposed to do to keep living in the halfway house or to get your kids back or something. No, V is for voluntary. In other words, you want it. You're ready for it, you want it. it read with me Romans 12, one through two, it's on the screen. Offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. Let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. So V is for voluntarily submit. Tell God from the bottom of your heart that you're ready to change and then ask him to change you. Ask him what to do next and then be willing to do it. In fact, the I in victory is for identify my character defects. Identify what, wants, what do I want to change? We lift these up to the Lord. Take them right out of your fourth and fifth step inventory, friends, and then add more as you go along. Tell God every last thing you need changed in yourself and ask him to change you. You know, I want you to read from me from Proverbs 16.9. This is something good to keep in mind. Let's read it together. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his course, okay? See, because you're going to be partnering with God in his removal of your defects that you know about, and God is going to show you even more um, as you go along. God will lead the way and change what he wants to, how he wants to, but you agree that these particular things need changing. You have a good long talk with God about them. Tell him you're willing to do whatever it takes to cooperate with him. And then you go on to the C in victory, change my mind. Change my mind. So what are you supposed to change your mind about? Well, what in your mind is supposed to change? Well, everything. Everything, remember, new creation. Everything, inside and out, everything you know ended you up completely powerless sitting here on a Friday night, okay? But don't feel inferior. Don't feel inferior. That's really everybody's real condition. Whether we're sitting in a program of recovery tonight or not, um, for us, I mean, our defects can be like really obvious, right? Because they have to do with, you know, out, sometimes outward behaviors that like society shuns, like drug addiction or stealing or gambling or sex addiction and the like. I mean, we go to jail and the whole world watches, right? But everyone is powerless over their own addictions and afflictions. We're not alone. Uh, when we know we're powerless, we can admit to God we don't know everything. Everything we think we know is suspect and may very well be wrong. And ask him how he wants us to change our behaviors, our beliefs, and our feelings. You know, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous puts it this way on page 42. Um, this is a little passage that was spoken by one of the first AA members regarding um, the, the time that, uh, uh, that um, he had a few friends visit him after he went out on a bender. And these friends were telling him uh, how to get sober. And this is what he said. He said, then they outlined the spiritual answer and program of action, which a hundred of them had followed successfully. Though I had only been a nominal churchman, their proposals were not intellectually hard to swallow. But the program of action, although entirely sensible, was pretty drastic. It meant I would have to throw several lifelong conceptions out the window. That was not easy. But the moment I made up my mind to go through with the process, I had the curious feeling that my alcoholic condition was relieved, as in fact it proved to be. The T in victory stands for turn my character defects over to Jesus. Turn my character defects over to Jesus. You know, relying on ourselves has blocked our ability to change. Self-will does not work when it's pointed towards what I think I want. But self-will pointed along the will of God, it works great. James 4.10 tells us who's in charge and how that works. Read it with me, it's on the screen. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. See, because you can't change until you're actually willing to let go of your character defects. Give them over to the one who can handle them better than you. And that's why we say, let go and let God. It means that you give up your right to make decisions about what stays and goes. You give up your right to obsess over yourself anymore. You lay it down. All that you give to Jesus. And then we remember the Owen victory, which is it's only one day at a time. One day at a time. Because it took a long time to develop our character defect. You weren't born with them. 
I mean, God brought you into this world a blank slate, ready to serve him, worship him, and between sin and self and Satan, we ended up with all sorts of instincts out of control. Recovery happens one day at a time. So you might as well just settle in. And, and hear me when I say life by the yard is hard, life by the inch is a cinch, friends. Je- Jesus said the same thing in a different way when he said in Matthew 6, 34, it's on the screen, read it with me. So don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. When it comes to our character defects, they can be causing us maybe so much trouble that living one day at a time seems practically impossible. But really, friends, it's not. Living any more than for this very moment is the impossible thing. It's physically impossible to live more than this very moment. Think about it. I remember crying to my sponsor years ago, just crying about not being able to live in the present. I was always thinking about the past and worrying about the future. And she told me, she got so frustrated with me that she finally told me, fine, then just transport yourself back into the past and live there, okay? Leave me alone. And I told her, that's stupid. It's impossible. And she said, okay, then, oh, fine. Then just go ahead and get yourself a time machine and transport yourself into the future and live there. And I thought she had pretty much lost her mind, you know, and I told her so. (laughs) I said, that's impossible. And she looked at me and she said, you're right. So why do you spend so much time worrying about doing something that's impossible? (laughs) You technically can't go into the past. You can't go into the future. That's just the devil messing with your mind. Live the only way you can live one day at a time. And you know what? It made sense to me. (laughs) When it comes to our defects, It makes sense. We can cooperate with God this very minute, this moment on what he's telling us to do with them, this very minute about this very thing that is in front of us right now, in front of our nose, whether it be our anger or using drugs or eating or jealousy, whatever. Because recovery is a process, and that's the R. Recovery is a process. It can only happen one day at a time. This is what Philippians 1.6 says says, and I'm sure that God who began the good work in you will keep right on helping you grow. See the process there? In his grace until his task within you is finally finished on that day when Jesus Christ returns. And God has given us the power this minute to overcome our addictions and afflictions right now. Let's take him up on it now, in this minute, and only this minute. And here's lastly, the why in victory. You and I must choose God's change instead of our own will. You and I must choose God's change instead of our own will. And here we are again, right back to the beginning, right? We have to choose this. It has to be voluntary. Because unless you want to change and agree to do whatever God wants you to do as he's changing you from the inside out, it's just not going to happen. And so we need a good prayer for this. And Psalm 140, 10, I think, is a good prayer for us. And it's on the screen. Let's pray it together. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. That's a good one. Memorize that one. Keep it with you. Because sometimes the spirit leading is going to hurt. Sometimes you'll wonder if it's worth it. Sometimes you'll think it's not working. But if you keep giving up your right to obsess over yourself and keep asking God for his will rather than yours, the path will be the right one, and you will emerge a new creation, the new creation that God is longing to make you into. I want to close with this. It's an illustration. So there was a Japanese soldier in World War II. His name is Hiro Anoda. Hiro Anoda was stationed to serve in the jungles of the Philippines in World War II, And after a period of time, the war ended, and Anoda received word through flyers dropped from airplanes and from the local people uh, that the war had ended. But he didn't believe it. He was sure the Allies were only trying to fool him into giving up. So for over 30 years this went on, and Anoda continued to hide in the jungles, fighting a war that was over for decades out of fear that it wasn't really over. So here's the thing. Uh, Anoda could have left the war in his jungle prison at any time. 
but inside himself, he feared that the war wasn't over, that he could never leave. Is this you? Are you stuck in addiction and harmful and healthy behaviors because you think the war isn't over no matter what anyone else says? Let me tell you, if you ask God to be the leader of your life and to remove your character defects, he's going to do it. That's not a question. Jesus has already won your war over sin and selfishness. The battle has been fought for you by Jesus on the cross, and Jesus won. Now, whether you give yourself over to him and accept his removal of your character defects and whether you come out of your prison and your jungle and stop fighting the war that's already been won, now that's another thing. Today, now, will you overcome your fear and begin that sometimes painful walk of being a new person, a new creation in Christ, with new habits, new feelings, new actions, in a new place, with new results, all to the glory of God. See, only God can change a person, but only a person can step into the change. Do it. Step into the victory. And let's shout it out again. One, two, three. Victory! It's waiting for you. And now, let's stand to pray. God, I am really grateful for the blessings you've given me that I know based on my past, I do not deserve. But you don't look at the past. You look at me with different eyes than I see myself. You see new possibilities when, when all we sometimes see is hopelessness. God, you make all things new. Yet we must be broken by the old life in order to experience a new life. So I'm grateful, God, because the only reason I'm standing here today is because of your grace and power. Your choice to redeem and renew me, it's all a gift from you. I owe it all to you. Now, God, I pray that you pour out your power and healing on me and all your people tonight. Let each person here within the sound of my voice listen and respond to your offer of victory over their emotional and physical and spiritual difficulties. Break strongholds tonight, Lord. Because there's no difficulty that you can't overcome. There's no character defect that you can't change. There's no tragedy that you can't redeem. You've already overcome all of this for us. Now, God, let us grab onto you, listen to you, follow your instructions to experience the victory you offer today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The altar is open. Come and pray.